Greetings, planet Earth. This is Captain Voltaire. And I'm Chief Engineer Jeff. And we are Glyph. So uh, Rev did uh, most of the actual writing behind the concepts and everything, but I'm, I sort of wrote a lot of the music and had sort of the, the starting vision for the band. And I, I'd been reading a lot of uh, Dying Earth, uh, like subgenre of sci-fi and fantasy. So a lot of Jack Vance and Gene Wolfe novels and just kind of had this idea for, uh, for, for a band with ly lyrical themes that kind of merge science fiction and, and old school fantasy novels and things like that. And yeah, so I started writing some music, just wanted to make some really just straight, straight ahead, banging power metal songs, and just arrange like the, the tightest band of killers that I could find. And yeah, that's, yeah. Cool. that's how we got here. And then once we um, whittled down, like we had some like 30 songs, once we whittled it down to, or, well, basically the ones on the album, the best nine, best nine. we uh, kind of rearranged them and took a look and I was like, oh shit, there's a coherent plot in mm -hmm. these lyrics. I'm like, let's try sprinkling in some lore and some story and, kind of fleshed it out with some imagery and next thing we knew we had a pseudo concept album on our hands by complete accident. Yeah. <laughs> and we're pretty stoked about it too because now on like the Patreon and on our Twitch and things like that there's full on lore clubs of mm -hmm. just like book nerds basically being like, well what if this character did this and like fan fiction and... Yeah, it's uh, it's been pretty cool. People people like really respond to the, to the storyline stuff. Yeah. In, in a way that I like never expected to. Which is funny because we never shoehorn it in. We basically just go to write a banger song and that's mm -hmm. the most important thing. But if several banger songs turn into a coherent plot line, they're just like, fuck it, it's a movie soundtrack now. There you go. Yeah, why not? Yeah. The Storm of Crimson, Crimson Fire, I feel like the artwork for that and the video, mm -hmm. it's like the cover of the video game. <laughs> was that intentional? How did you guys come up with that's... Hey, that animation idea. <laughs> it was pretty intentional, I would say. That's exactly yeah. what we told the artist. Is like we want it to look like a Super Nintendo game yeah. cover, but just <laughs> vertical for t-shirts. Um, yeah, pretty much. I mean, like I'm very influenced by like classic Super Nintendo game soundtracks, like 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 Mega Man, and like just any any of the, like like Metroid and F Zero and stuff like that. So any of those like classic video games have a big in, in, inspiration and influence on like what I what I like to write. And uh, we're trying to, you know, I, I like to let that bleed a little yeah. bit, you know? And I mean, there's a whole element of what we're doing. I mean, the power metal that we're playing was more relevant when we were, basically, when we were kids, right? We were early yeah. teens, in the early teens, you know, when that early first wave of like 2000s power metal came out. So mm -hmm. we're thinking about the things that we were doing at that time, you know, playing video games, listening to power metal, and yeah. trying to recreate a lot of those feelings in the music that we're creating now, not just for us, but mm -hmm. for that 14 year old fan out there that, you know, is out just playing video games and playing power metal, trying to yeah. keep that the true essence, but not in some gatekeepy weird way, more in the way of, you mm -hmm. know, would 14 year old less think this was cool or would they think it was lame? Yeah, it's supposed to be, fu it's supposed to be fun and it's, it's for everyone, you know? Yeah, just yeah. like video games. Yeah. And who did the album cover artwork for the record? Uh, this guy named Luthfi, Luth Slaughter Art. Um, I'd worked with him in a couple other bands that I was in, and um, I was trying to trying to use him because it'll do like the whole like dark fantasy element. Um, we didn't want to get too bubblegummy and happy with uh, mm -hmm. with the cover because I mean we also had that element where we were looking at what we wanted to do with it with bringing these things to life. And he kind of had the first, iter first hand at iterating, like, here's our story, here's our ideas. And when we saw what he had with that darker imagery, it actually worked out really well for us, because, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know, it's just a sick, it's a sick album cover. Yeah, it's and awesome. Even just deciding on color schemes and everything, like, I can't remember the last time I saw a sick pink, purple, and red album cover that was actually like, oh, like, I want this on something. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah. It, I, I feel like it does a lot. Like it introduces the characters. It's got the silhouettes. It introduces like the, the villains of the story and yeah, the settings. Some environments. It, yeah. it, basically, for me, it was just like I, we just need a piece of art that's like a call to adventure. Is there anything at the moment that's like shows or movies or comics or books or anything that you're like oh, super yeah. into? T -t Tons. Yeah. When we were when we were kind of when myself and the director of our uh, Volarod video, uh, 
Rob Zawistowski, a, a fantastic filmmaker in Vancouver. Uh, we were talking about, you know, the references that came up were a lot of like like Blade Runner and uh, like Dune. Um, it was Alter Carbon. Alter Carbon, that's yeah. right. Yeah, that, yeah, oh, yeah that, cool. that popped up a lot. Yeah, yeah lot, lots of just like the, the cantina scene in Star Wars, of course. That, that was a big one. And just trying just trying to get this like kind of cyberpunk sci-fi like tavern atmosphere where we get in all kinds of, you know, mischief. Three shows in, mm-hmm. how awesome is it to be on the road with this record and getting the reception that it's <laughs> I mean, the <laughs> album's not even out yet. It's yeah, 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 yeah. It's, 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 it's hard to believe, like, it's... It, we've just been grinding for so long with, with other projects and everything, and the other, the other guys in the band will tell you the exact same thing. We've just been, like, doing this. Like, we, we've all been in bands for 15 to 20 years, each and, of us. And not, know? like, you know, playing at your high school. Like, we've been doing gigging and touring since we were, like, yeah. 15, 16, all of us. Yeah, m- most of the people in the band have been overseas with yeah. their other projects and stuff like that. And so, like, but, it, but it's, it's been, like, a tough grind. And to have us just kind of come out of the woodwork with this small collection of songs. Like, there's only four songs that people can hear publicly right now. And to just come out with that and just hit the ground running in such a big way and being able to hit the road with a bunch of really seasoned veterans. Um, and just, it feels like just such a massive level up. It's, we're just kind of trying to like hold on to the reins and not fall off right now. Yeah. <laughs> it, it feels like starting a new game, but starting on New Game Plus. Are you gonna continue the storyline? Have you been thinking about that or are you just soaking it all in right now? <laughs> um, we, we, we have a lot of songs a lot of songs written, uh, stuff that um, didn't make the sound that we're reworking, brand new fresh ideas, and I do think that we want to kind of continue the story. Again, we don't sit there being like, okay, here's the story, let's write songs to fit the story. It's Mm -hmm. let's write banger fucking songs and then see how that plot can kind of fit in, because then it doesn't matter whether it's a continuation of this tale or something else, it's just like, hey, this is Captain's Log, Star Date, whatever the fuck it is, here's what happened on on this Mm -hmm. point, so kind of opens us up in that way. Yeah, to, to me it's kind of like treating it like the old, like the original Conan of Samaria stories by like Robert E. Howard, where it's like, the stories are not written in the chronological order of like Conan's life. It's like, here's just like a little, it's, it's like Conan's just at a pub telling you like a story about something that happened to him. And so you don't get like the linear chronological order of things Like we can kind of, I mean, I see like we could treat it like that if we wanted to. Yeah, that's true. But at the same time, as far as soaking it in, no, because we're sitting in the van and be like, oh, how cool would it be if like <laughs> this thing happened on the next album? And I was like, man, yeah. this album's not even out yet. Yeah, we yeah, have yeah. songs written and like <laughs> plots pointed out for like the second album. Yeah. And our first one hasn't even come out yet. So mm. it's nice that we're all just also really excited about it. And I think that's what a lot of people see on mm. stage with it because we're just nerding out and being dorks and like yeah. having the time of our lives. Yeah, exactly. The, the, the fun factor is always the number one. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thank you.